Arctic Sleeping Disease, ASD, is a sickness of unknown nature that has seen regular outbreaks in the Canadian city of Codison since 1982. No infection vectors for ASD have been identified. Medical personnel have been able to tend victims without contracting symptoms themselves, so the disease is considered non-transmissible by humans. Its cause remains unknown. ASD progresses in the following stages. Phase 1. Citizens will become ill with cold-like symptoms. They experience tiredness, aches, congestion, sinus irritation, and occasionally a small fever. Minor bruising appears on some areas of the body. This phase lasts a few days, five at most. Phase 2. The symptoms from Phase 1 are reduced or eliminated. Victims develop a profound extroversion to human company and mild photosensitivity, preferring the solitude of a darkened room. Attempts to socialize with the victims are met with a combination of fear and hostility, even when proffered by close friends or loved ones. Idiosyncratic physical compulsions develop, such as finger tapping to specific rhythms, repetitive neck motions, and onset of a crouching, hunched posture. They will utter misanthropic phrases and mantras under their breath, either unaware of or unconcerned with being overheard. Some observations suggest they may not even be aware they're saying anything. When asked about the phrases, multiple victims appeared genuinely confused and did not remember speaking. The antisocial component of this behavior creates resistance to getting help for the condition, and in some cases, denial of a problem. Some affected citizens stopped coming into work or leaving their houses at all, prompting investigation and hospitalization. No violent resistance has been reported. These symptoms appear over the course of a couple days and last two to three weeks. Phase three. One by one, each victim will fall into a comatose, unresponsive state. Deep bruising appears in identical patterns on all subjects over the whole body. These bruise patterns have the look of a symbol or icon of some sort, but no one knows what or why that would be the case. Theories have been proposed that ASD's agent, whatever it may be, focuses its attack on a specific combination of internal organs, and that the pattern of bruising corresponds to a pathway of travel among these targets. Until an agent is discovered for ASD, these theories remain unverifiable. Intermittent bursts of hushed words come from the comatose victims every few hours. These words include, but are not limited to, sleep, please, yes, dream, fresh, night, and the phrase, close, so close. The coma comes on abruptly and lasts for exactly six days. Phase 4. Sudden death, followed by rapid and abnormal body decomposition. The victim's flesh desiccates, effectively mummifying the entire body in mere moments. Non-uniform rates of change cause the body to contort in either long, smooth motions or sudden spasms. Strange hissing sounds come from the drying flesh as this progresses possibly due to escaping moisture. Attempts to discern where the moisture and other bodily components go during the desiccation have failed. There is no residue beneath the corpse, no pool of melted or dissolved biological material, and no sign of vaporization, save for the aforementioned hissing. Analysis of the remains yields no potential sources or mechanisms for the disease. The remains are in the words of Dr. Bedard, dry husks. The mortality rate for ASD 
has been calculated at 35% per outbreak on average. However, the rates have varied widely, with some outbreaks experiencing as little as a 2% rate of succumbing to phase 4, and others a 100% rate. Patients who recover from phase 3 do so simultaneously and return to perfect health within hours. No cause has been determined for recovery. Initial infections all occur within days of each other. All victims progress at a similar rate, meaning the phases of arctic sleeping disease can be applied to the outbreak as a whole. In addition to the peculiar symptoms of ASD, correlated anomalies are observed in Codicin as each outbreak progresses. Once the outbreak nears the end of Phase 2, or enters the beginning of Phase 3, Codicin experiences a weather pattern change. Dark clouds cover the sky constantly, blocking all sunlight, moonlight, and starlight. Even the aurora is completely blocked. Citizens report numerous encounters with strangers in the city, asking about the behavior of specific community residents. Sometimes these strangers wish to know about the victims of ASD, and other times about apparently uninvolved and uninfected neighbors, friends, or acquaintances of the victims. When questioned by law enforcement about these strangers, None of the citizens were able to provide a description of them. No one who has reported such an interaction is capable of remembering a single specific detail about these strangers, from appearance to quality of voice, even to gender. Law enforcement has been unable to apprehend any of these unknown individuals. Reporting citizens say that these strangers implied they were agents of Canada Health, investigating a recurring disease. When contacted for confirmation, Canada Health denied this. Conspiracy theorists have concluded that the stranger's story is a cover, and that the strangers are either countering a foreign-sponsored black ops program, or perpetrating one on behalf of Canada. As soon as an ASD outbreak finishes, with all victims dead or recovered, the strangers stop being sighted, and the weather returns to normal. One outbreak remains exceptional. In 1993, after all but two patients succumbed to Phase 4, the oppressive skies turned to hard, unrelenting rain. The strangers remained in the city, but changed their behavior from interviewing citizens individually to patrolling in groups down the streets. This is the only time that on-duty law enforcement officials cited the strangers. Witnesses report they emanated an ever-increasing sense of urgency, such that anyone who approached them was filled with uneasiness and decided to move away from them. The feeling of uneasiness affected law enforcement as well, preventing any contact with the strangers. Authorities sent citizens home from work and instructed them to remain in their homes until notified by law enforcement personnel. After nine hours of unceasing rain, what was described as an immense lightning display was detected to the northeast, three quarters of a mile away. Strikes were reported occurring at a rate of eight per second or more for three and a quarter minutes. The buildings of Codison suffered broken windows and very minor exterior damage from the ensuing thunder. All lightning strikes were in the same general area. After the final strike, the rain ceased. No flooding was detected. Half an hour later, cloud cover lifted. Rangers and law enforcement personnel investigated the area of the lightning strikes. They found a clearing in the woods to the northeast where it appeared that every single strike targeted precisely the same location, the center of a small ditch surrounded by a broken ring of boulders. The ground in the center of the ditch was covered in figures scorched into both the grass and portions of what looked like soil turned to dark glass. Samples sent for analysis were confirmed to be a type of glass. The ditch was not far from the home of the recluse, Louis Brevort. 
After the events of that outbreak, he was not seen again. It was assumed that he became infected and never submitted himself for treatment, succumbing to phase four in isolation. A search of his residence, however, revealed no mummified remains. Louis remains officially listed as missing. Conspiracy theorists suggest that he was in the center of the lightning-struck ditch and that his remains were utterly vaporized. Investigators insist that they found no trace of anything that resembled remains at the strike site, not even a little pile of ashes. Even so, stigma fell on the rest of the Brevort family living in the city. When the next outbreak happened, Julie Brevort, sister of Louis, was admitted for treatment as another Phase II ASD victim. She later succumbed to Phase Four. The Brevort family was no longer outcast after her death. The next outbreak was not until 2008, 15 years later. It was the longest gap between outbreaks recorded. Since 2008, two more ASD outbreaks happened in 2012 and 2015. Locals are expecting a recurrence soon. A poll of the residents revealed that as many as 31% were actively looking to relocate, with an additional 25% saying they would like to, but could not afford to do so. Until a cause for the outbreaks is found, or a cure is developed that can prevent phase four and allow all patients to recover, Codison is resigned to a recurrent culling of its citizens. Its population in 1982, the year of the first outbreak, was almost 15,000. Since then, a total of seven outbreaks have occurred, directly resulting in 1,410 deaths, excluding the possible Louis Brevort. Other factors, such as non-ASD deaths and relocation, have contributed to bring the population down to 4,300 at the beginning of 2018.